Hey everyone, Brian here, Astrolips2000. Today I'm bringing you guys a video on using, manipulating, creating masks in PixInsight. Um, these are some of the masks that I find the most useful or I find myself using uh, the most. So I decided to make a video to show you guys uh, how to make some of them. So let's dive in and see what we got. Okay, so these are just some images I selected randomly to show you guys some of my uh, favorite masks. And we'll start with a luminance mask. And that one's very easy to create. All you do is you come up here in the upper left-hand corner and click this rainbow box with the smaller gray box that says extract C-I-E-L component. And when you click that with the image highlighted, it will extract the luminance. And this is very helpful uh, for making masks because you can overlay the mask like so. You grab the icon of the mask that you just created and drop it over your image. You'll see that hollow box open. And if you drive it, drag and drop it over the other icon, you'll see the box turns into a square, which would match the two views, which is not what we want. You want the open box. So the image turns red. So then click on the image behind it to bring this one forward. You're going to right click, mask, and then show mask to not show the mask. Okay. And luminance masks are very helpful uh, in particular for curves adjustment. So you want to put the luminance mask on because you don't want to mess with the background of the image. You only want to mess, uh, you know, change the bright portions or parts of the image. So then you can come into your curves and make whatever kind of adjustments you want. Typically, uh, saturation. And you can see it's only affecting this area, nothing with the background. There you go. That looks so nice. Just to give you an idea. the mask from the image you can right click mask whoops mask and then remove mask or up here you click this box with this red x through it i know mo many of them do but it's oh it's this one a little bit here more towards the middle and now you can see the icon is no longer have that or orange to it like this that oh, geez And once the mask is overlaid, you'll see how the icon is orange versus the gray. So again, we click this to get rid of the mask. You can also manipulate masks just like you do your images. So for example, if you wanted to uh, remove the stars from the mask, because maybe in hitting the curves adjustment, you don't want to mess with the stars. So you want to leave the stars uh, the way they are. So that's a very simple process, and that would be just to uh, remove the stars from the mask, just like your normal image. So let's do that real quick. Okay. So now, the stars aren't in the mask. Now the only thing that's going to be affected would just be this, uh, the main part of the comet. And you can take it further from there. You know, you can um, come in and do histogram transformation to a mask. If you really wanted to hit that bright areas or make it darker to make sure you're really only hitting the parts that you want to hit. Maybe you don't want to hit the core of the comet at all. You just want to hit the tail. So then we come in here, grab clone stamp. Set the radius high. We don't want to see any of that. You get really good at this if you grew up playing uh, Super Nintendo at Mario Paint because it's a lot like that. Okay. That's kind of a weird shape there, huh? Wow. Okay. And then don't forget to go a little bit further on the mask. You can do another step called convolution. And convolution will take a mask and, and blur it because sometimes you don't want to have those hard edges. So... Um, it's very easy. You just go to convolution, hit this circular button to give you the preview. 
And then you can adjust the parameters up here to give you uh, whatever look, however you want it to look. Maybe you do want it to only hit that part or you don't want to blur it out a little bit. In this case, I will. And there we have the comet mask. Uh, <laughs> it's a pretty funny looking mask. So that's your luminance mask. Um, let me get rid of this. Close it. If you ever worked on um, the Bat and Squid Nebula, you will definitely need to learn how to make masks. This one I did a while ago. And this was the mask I ended up making for the squid so I can make sure I only hit the areas of the blue that I was looking to hit. And I was able to create this from the oxygen that I extracted from here and then uh, work on the histogram a little bit further like I just was showing you and using clone stamp to clean the edges up. So let me minimize this back down. So that's luminance masks. Now I'm gonna get rid of this and show you. Next one I use often, a good one to show you here is the ghost of Cassiopeia is uh, called the game and the game mask. It's a script. So I'll leave a link below. You have to download it and install it. It's very easy. Uh, but for that, you come up here to utilities and game. This one is amazing because it lets you uh, pinpoint particular, uh, you know, exact areas in the image. And a good one to use this for is star halos, uh, whether you want to enhance them or get rid of them. But this is a good image because it has a giant halo. So you can do multi-point by clicking um, three portions of a curve, circle, something like this. And it will create the mask in that area or there you go. And then all you do is you just roll the wheel and you can grab the edges to manipulate it however you want. You can have multiple ones. If there was a, a bunch of halos you wanted to hit one time. And you can change the type of mask that you want to create. Typically, I always do a gradient mask. But in this case, all right, let's delete this one. We will only keep this mask. The halo out like this. Click OK. Sometimes it will expand the images to the mask, uh, the mask and image to the limits of your screen. I just think that's a glitch in the script, but man, whatever, it's, it works amazing. So now look at this mask. Perfect. And you can now pinpoint exact area in your image whether it be for good or bad, uh, if you're trying to get rid of a halo or you're trying to, you know, adjust the saturation too bright. So the game script, again, that's one of my favorites um, for good or bad. Again, you can use it to enhance your image or to, you know, fix an, an area that you have an issue with on your image. Use the elephant trunk for this one. Okay, guys, the next mat, the next mask that I use often is a range mask, and this was one of the first ones that I learned how to use. My uh, process icon, you go process all processes, and then uh, range selection right here. This one I probably use the most. You click the little circle right here to give you the preview, and you get a white screen here. So the first thing you want to do is grab the lower limit here up at the top and slowly start to drag it over. And what this mask does, um, don't beat me up in the comments if I don't explain it correctly, but to me it just hits the areas of the high, uh, high contrast. So in this case you'll see where the elephant trunk is meets the background. You know, in this case, Maybe we only want to create a mask that's going to give us all these nice edges. Something a little bit more in depth than a luminance mask. So you could get it down to the area. Maybe we wanted to only include this area. 
which a luminance mask wouldn't give us just this area. It would give us all the luminance, like all the bright areas. So maybe we want to pull this over, only include something like this. And you can grab the smoothness and pull it over, and that's going to blur it out and get rid of all the stars and, and stuff in the background. One other thing I want to show you on this range selection. Now, if you got an area such as a galaxy and you want to say hit either only the core or maybe just the arms, you can use this mask for something like that as well. If you grab the upper limit and pull it over, you're now going to make your mask more like a donut and you can hit very specific areas um, to create a mask to play with uh, the luminance or your colors to give you some real contrast between, uh, you know, your different colors or different areas of the nebula. Or again, if you have a galaxy, you can use this to, you know, block out the core and only work on maybe the outer part or vice versa. On my last image of the triangular galaxy, that's exactly what I did. I reversed the mask and I only used it to work, remove the green from the core when SCNR wasn't really working for me. All right, so let's set this back to the way it was. Over here, I'm going to fuzz this out, and we're going to click Go. Let's see what we get. Close the preview window, and here's our mask. Now, it's pretty rare that I get a mask, and I don't end up manipulating it a little bit further. In this case, maybe there's some background that we want to get rid of, and we could just create a new range mask, or you can you know, adjust it just like an image. So we come to range mask in your histogram transformation, pull up the preview and however you want to fade that stuff out in the background, you can do it through histograms. You can do curves, which another way of adjusting it, pull it down in the background like so. And take it even further, clone stamp. Maybe we don't want to include this area for whatever reason. I'm just giving you uh, scenarios. So now we'll come into clone stamp. And just like Mario Paint, just get rid of this area in here. Click the little green arrow to apply it. And uh, now we have our mask. Okay, so that's range masks. That one's, I love that one. You guys can play with that a little little further in the limits over here on how you could use it and apply it to your image. I use that one often. Again, I will use the uh, luminance mask or the range mask and add um, local histogram equalization. Typically, you would want to use a luminance mask or a range mask and then you can only hit, um, let's do a range mask. So we got it open. We want to make sure we want to hit the inner area, say. Maybe for whatever reason we'd want to do that. So let's go here, apply this, close the preview window. Now, again, you're going to grab this little gray icon and drop it over the gray area. The image is going to turn red to let you know the mask is now applied. And these, where you can see is where the action is going to take place. And where the red is, is where the mask is applied. Let me click mask. So now you can't see the mask. It's still there, though, because the icon on the side here is gray. So now let's go to here. And this should say local histogram. Oops, got to close, close down. Okay, now we're going to apply local histogram equalization, but the mask is on, so we should only see it impact certain portions of the nebula. Okay, there we go. You can see that the only affected oops, the inner parts where we have that mask. See, mask. Show mask.
and it only impacts those areas. So it's great if you really want to hit the, make sure, really accentuate the contrast or the colors between the nebula. Your preview window. Oh boy. There you go. You, now you can really see the impact or the power of the mask. I'm not sure if you know this, but in the curves here, the graph, it's much like a graph or an engine. This is your bottom end, which would be your darks, portions of the image. This is the middle to cover your midtones. And then this is the high to cover the brighter portions of your image. Give you an example if you wanted to only work on something in the background you can grab the lower portion of the curves you pin up put pin in the middle sorry put a pin in the top and the middle and grab the curve at the bottom it's only going to affect dark in the image same thing when you grab the middle mid-tones and then these are your brighter portions. And my last set of masks that I use frequently are color masks. This is a script that I downloaded. I'll provide you guys with the link below. And they use pixel math. So let me just close this. By clicking on pixel math, I have a blue mask, a green mask, and you just click. You don't even have to do that. You just grab the process icon, drop it on the image, and it will extract whatever color you select, whether it be cyan, yellow, green, blue, and so on. There is another way to do uh, color masks through, there's a color mask script that you can use that works very well, but I like just using the pixel math icons because they it works very easily. So now I would extract the blue like this and then come up here to convolution and just soften this a little bit on those hard edges and just grabbing the top slider is the only one i typically adjust close that and then we could see how convolution blurred the image make it a little bit softer when you use this for a mask so now saying this one, I just wanted to brighten up the blue. I could just make the blue mask and then only hit the blue or the yellow. Okay, guys, let me show you the last use for masks. And I use it often for this process as well is when I stretch images. And it works well in images that have uh, really high contrast, like the Orion Nebula with the core that everyone tries to not blow out by combining different uh, length exposures or using HDR. Let me show you a way that I found that works very well. So uh, let me just kill the auto stretch. We're going to go to histogram transformation. And this is an image that I collected when I was trying to make sure my RC6 was collimated. So let me cancel this auto stretch. Preview window. And let me just start stretching this image to show you guys how you can use this mask. I'm going to go back and forth and get it to the point where I can see the trapezium isn't blown out. Or the trapezium is the center part. Let's darken this up a little bit. That's pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to stop here. Because I don't want this to be blown out. So what I'm going to do is go over to range selection. Hit my circle for the preview window. Grab the top slider and bring it over until I could see that core area. Which is about right there. I'm going to pull the smoothness over here. Try to get rid of the stars. And I think that works pretty well. You want to make sure you keep that little arm that sticks down there. You get rid of that. Close the preview window. Now I'm going to get clone stamp because there are some stars that punch through that I don't want to show. So let me 
Get rid of those areas using my Mario paint skills. A little fly swatter game. Game sick. You guys ever play that? Okay. Let me pull the mask over Orion here. And if we show the mask, it should only show the core area, but it doesn't. It shows the opposite. So what do we do? We right click mask and you can invert mask. And now it will reverse the area that you had before. And it's going to protect this core area as we stretch it. So I just closed the mask there. I didn't turn it off. I just, and I'm not showing it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to continue to stretch Orion. Except now we're not blowing the core out. Keeping the core the way it was. And this is, you got to be careful with this. At some point you're going to take the mask off because there's going to be too much of a contrast difference, which you don't want. You really be able to tell that mask is there. So we just gave a really good stretch to there. Let's see if we can get it a little bit more before you start to see the impact of the, that you know that the mask is there. And I, I think that's pretty good. Can we get a little, we'll go further adjustments if we have to. Now let's get rid of the mask. And this is stretched. You can still see the core. You the colors are off for a little bit, but let's expand this and see if we can fix that. Let's darken, set the black point where we want. Right there. And now should be able to stretch the whole image to the point we want, not there. Pull the black point over a little bit. Okay. So let me close this back down. And again, it's just me showing you guys briefly. You could spend your time making this mask bigger or smaller, really targeting the areas um, that you want to hit. So let's just show you if we back this up. This image is now, it's not stretched. So we use any other kind of stretch, soft stretch to easy processing suite, which I love. Let's compare the two to show you. Very close, except on this one, the core is not blown out. Again, you could spend more time enhancing and processing these masks. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful and uh, let me know. Thanks for watching everyone. Brian here, AstroLibs2000. Thanks.